Hey everyone, on Les Stroud's Wild Harvest, I get the opportunity to show you a few tips and some techniques for gathering wild edibles. But this is only meant to open the doors for you to an amazing adventure of being out here and partaking of the wild harvest. The only way to truly and safely identify a plant so that you can harvest it and harvest it properly is to seek knowledge from a local expert. Use your books, go online, but find somebody locally who's passionate about wild edible plants. Take their courses, and then you can safely enjoy the wild harvest. We don't always have the opportunity to pick and choose and be where we want to be to obtain a wild harvest. Life gets in the way. I'm lucky. I've got this place up here in Tomogamy, Ontario, Canada. And I know where the wild edibles are and when I need to be there to gather them. The last time I was here, I'm pretty sure I went overboard. I think I got something like 13 different ingredients. Oh, sweet kale, sweet fern, a smallmouth bass, rock tripe, reindeer moss, blueberries. So this time I thought, let's limit it. Let's just take them to one place in time, a moment in the seasons of gathering, right here in this swamp. And we'll just see what we can find for the wild harvest. All right, I didn't quite get the piece I wanted, but it's enough to show Paul what I'm going to try to get tomorrow, and I'm, I'm going to have to get wet to do it, is the tuber. It grows along here, and that will be a challenge. Here's what I want. Right over here. Just one. I think what I'd like to do is keep Chef Paul focused on this spot right here, the marsh. And I don't want to complicate things for them. So I'm going to base everything off of just two plants, the cattail and the yellow pond lily. This is all I'm going to bring Chef Paul, just an example of what we're going after. All right, Kevin, why don't you show everybody where we really are? What is this? <laughs> this is the result of me thinking things through. Here's the idea. This time I want to take you one place, two ingredients. Okay. 
that's it. I want to focus. So what I've done is I've brought you examples of what is out there across the lake. There's a beautiful sheltered bay and it's just filled with cattail and pond lily tubers. Now, you already know about the cattail, okay? Mm -hmm. But this guy here, normally this is considered a survival food. This is what we want, is this part right here. Normally this is gonna be as big as eight inches long. This is something I'd love to see you experiment with. Normally I just have it in terms of a survival meal and it's awful. <laughs> it's horrid. So there you go, <laughs> no. there's a challenge. Thank you. <laughs> but this time, instead of me going and getting you the bounty, tomorrow I want you to do the gathering. I'll go after the pond lily. And then I want you to spend some time just taking it all in. Here you go. Get to know the plants here and tomorrow I'll take you out in that canoe and you can get to know the plants right where they live. I'm a little nervous about this one <laughs> based be. on what you said. It's kind of spongy, acidic, a hint of bitterness. Well, <laughs> reminds me of chewing on a sponge. It's really juicy. Definitely a lot of uh, acid to that. Like it just popped. And it's not an acid like lemon. It's more an acid like vinegar. And the cattail. It's absolutely delicious. The same sort of cucumbery flavor that's in the heart, except on steroids. So I'm happy about that one. And I know this rhizome is uh, full of starch. I was able to play with that the last time I was in Oregon with Les. Now the trick is, how can I get this to pair with that and keep the magic of this, if even I do that at all? Oh, hey, Paul, hang on. <laughs> totally forgot. I know how much you love cattail. The flower, right, the seed head. So. We can get tons and tons of that. So not only do you have the hearts and the rhizome and next year's growth, but we'll also have uh, probably at least a bowl full of the cattail flower to play with. Now that's gonna change some things, doesn't it? Yeah, that actually changes things a lot. This stuff yeah. is magic. Fresh air right now. That's a nice little spot. So, I do prefer it if you get to know the plant when that opportunity is in front of us, and it's in front of us now. I want you to get to know the cattail. We've worked with cattail together before, yeah. but I've never seen you really pick it other than by the side of the road in the muck, right? Well, yeah. this is this is this is where the cattail really belongs and comes alive is in a place like this in a tiny little tucked in bay kind of swampish off of a big lake this is beautiful oh, okay jackpot there we go what do we got okay got some rhizome Ooh. Oh, there's a nice shoot. That's perfect. These things, when they're at this stage, are so juicy and so tender. I think for lunch today, these will be perfect in a salad.
Did you have fun gathering? Oh, it was really good. Okay, so I'm thinking salad less. Okay. I've got some ingredients. Just how hungry are you? I'm always hungry. Okay, Paul, check this out. Some people consider cow lily rhizomes extremely bitter and unpleasant, even after prolonged boiling and several changes of water. But others have described them as sweet and excellent eating. Right, so I was like, okay, it's a total experiment. Yeah, I know, total experimentation time for you. The rhizomes are probably best in the late fall or early spring, so we're, we're, we're late spring. They're usually roasted or boiled and then peeled, sliced, and eaten with meat in soups and stews, often treated like a potato. Interesting how on one end it's not edible to some people, and on the other end it's delicious. making a salad. It's a play on a French classic, which is a niçoise salad. I don't have all the ingredients, but it's more the concept. It's potatoes, it's vegetables, and in this case, it's gonna have cattail. If you think of the cucumber flavor out of these guys, yeah. I actually brought in some cucumber, just so we can compare. We can have a taste of the cucumber note in the shoot and the actual cucumber to see if we're on track with that. Okay, that's, that's absolutely brilliant because you do always see that comparison in writing. Oh, it tastes like cucumber. But I have actually never thought about saying, well, let's, let's put it beside a cucumber and do a real comparison. That's brilliant. Now that is a perfect setup. Those fire irons have been with me on hundreds and hundreds of canoe trips. They're so versatile. And do what you're doing with the potatoes or put pots and pans on them or put a grate on them. They have been with me for, I want to say, 25 to 30 years. You're cooking with history there. And making history. Can I watch these for you a bit? That'd help. That'd just, be great. Just Thank keep you. spinning and flipping? Yeah. Okay. When it comes to having a shore lunch of any kind, whether you're cooking up some walleye, some bass, or you're having a fresh wild harvest salad. Either way, I think this combination, when you've got one person who can just focus on the fire and the other person focuses on the food, that teamwork always works well. I appreciate it. So the cattail is on the top, right? and I want to eat the cattail first. I mean, there's not enough that we can have a whole lunch based okay. on cattail, but I wanted us to have the whole experience up front and then just sort of dig into the, the bones of the salad and the, the potatoes at the bottom. So it's layered, mm -hmm. but there is the cucumber comparison right on top. So cucumber. Mm-hmm. All right. Cucumber. Now the cattail. And I had a little bit of fish with the cucumber, so I'll do the same here. Mmm. Interesting. Sure. Okay. Cattail tastes like cucumber, but it tastes more buttery, more mellow, smoother, and, and not mellow boring, just smoother and buttery. I think that's spot on. What I find is in this application, I actually I think the cucumber is almost overpowering the salad. I agree. I like the cattail I, I would, better. You know, I didn't want to say that because it does taste really nice, but the uh, the cattail is a much more subtle flavor with this salad. It's actually balancing in the salad better than the cucumber. Okay, Paul, I'm calling this a total win. All right, this is awesome. Uh, we've had our shore lunch, and I finally got you in the position where you got in touch with the cattail on your own accord sort of thing under your own terms you're out there it's not me gathering a bunch of stuff for you i love that but let's go back to the cabin and see what we can come up with as far as those pond lily tubers are concerned mm -hmm. and the rest of the cattail
I think when it comes to this dish, I want 100% showcase all of the wonderful things that the, the cattail has to offer. I want to showcase the sweetness of the shoots. I want to capitalize on the texture of the hearts. And I want to bring in the nutty flavor from the flower. Really, the challenge for me is coming up with one dish that celebrates all of those different ingredients. And one other consideration is the opportunity with the lily. The flavor when I tried it was somewhat acidic, but uh, in all honesty, I, I liked it. I didn't mind it at all. So if I can bring that flavor into the dish, and it might not work, I just might have the story of the marsh in one plate that all makes sense. <laughs> Right now, I just want to make sure that I can break down the cattail into its different components. So the first thing I'm doing is separating the heart. So the anatomy of the cattail, the tender shoots, the flower, the crispy cucumbery heart, and the starchy rhizome. Les, get out, are you? Yep, coming. Could you process those rhizomes for me? Of course I can. Thank you. Tighten that up. The pond lily tubers. So when are we working on those and what are we doing? I think we should taste it and see what we think. Oh, last time I ate that, I think I threw up. <laughs> I won't give you a lot, just a little shave. <laughs> oh, it's that good, is it? Well, it's not the flavor. Do you know what it is? It's the texture. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I remember that flavor. It's a flavor to me. Okay, I'm just oh, let me try and squeeze some of that juice out of there. Different? Yeah, do you know what? It's um it's lighter. It's hard to get the juice out of it. Oh, there we go. go. Okay. It's better than chewing on the piece itself. Yeah. Very different. Now, now, yeah, now it's a, it's a component. Now it's a flavor. It's a, like a spice. I mean, there's certain spices you wouldn't just do that with, right? You know, give me some time and I'll do what I can do. Okay. Right. Thank you. As if I just squeeze. Watch this. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll be able to get you some tablespoons of this stuff. So I'm pairing ginger rhizome with cattail rhizome. Now I have to remember how to do this. So I'm working on the cattail noodle. Another a couple of minutes on that. My garlic process is a little bit different this time. I have the garlic in with the oil when it's cold. I'm looking to extract the flavor and make a garlic flavored oil, if that makes sense. 
Not too hot. I don't want caramelization this time. Now the cattail starch. To make the glaze for this dish, a little soy, a little ginger. Okay, now it's time for the, the big experiment. We could wreck this just by adding this lily extraction, but I'm doing it anyways because I think it might fit. Hmm. Okay, that's about it. I'm not doing any more, but it's there and it works. A tad of sugar, just a pinch to balance out the lily. Now it's time for the star of the show, the cattail. I'm gonna cook those hearts out just a little bit, and then I'll add the noodles. I wish I could share this aroma. It's just full of layers of of garlic and, and cattail and a note of cucumber. This is the story of a canoe trip, hence why we're eating on the back of your canoe. Oh, this is perfect. When you're an outdoor guide, a professional outdoor guide, as I used to be for many years, this is how we would set up the tables all the time. Just like us using the fire grates over by the swamp, those fire grates have been with me almost 30 years. This canoe has been with me almost 30 years, and this technique has also been with me almost 30 years. So uh, there's a lot of reminiscing right now for me, which is terrific. These are cattail noodles. Those are cattail noodles. Oh, amazing. All right. Okay, so where did you play out the pond lily tubers? All that liquid that I squeezed out for you, where did that come into this? I used half of it in the sauce. Mm. The overall saltiness of the dish is not salt. It's the lily extraction. Really? Seriously, yeah. Oh, I thought that was just going to be a nightmare, that extraction. That, oh, that juice was, I thought it'd be so bitter and acrid that you wouldn't be able to hardly really use it without killing it with something else, you know? I didn't find it offensive. I found it to be acidic. Um, maybe astringent and slightly on the bitter end of things. Kind of in the way of lemon, if you have lemon rind or if you eat the seed. Interesting texture. It's, uh, for me, it seems uh, it's like reminiscent of some northern Thai dish I would have had. The noodle's very dense in a great way. Mmm. Mmm. Having a chance to work with the cattail in the past, really made this a straightforward process for me. The, the adventure was the pond lily. You did something that no one else has ever done. I'm pretty sure of it. I mean, any book I've ever read on wild edible plants, it's always been about boil them in several changes of water to get out of the bitterness. The fact that you thought of, well, no, they're juicy. Why don't we extract the juice and see if we can use it? You know, as you said, it's almost like a salt replacement. Because this dish is salty without being salty. Yeah. That's unique. I love that. Well, this is absolutely outstanding. Nice job. Thank you. It's, it's a champion dish for what I believe is the ambassador of the wild harvest, the cattail, the most, one of the most ubiquitous, most prolific, most hardy wild edibles, and it's right across the planet. And, and this is the thing, is that you can't always be where you want to be to, to go harvesting the wild. And right now, Paul and I are limited by travel restrictions, and that finds us you know, scratching our heads going, well, where can we go? Let's go to where we know. Let's go somewhere familiar. So we find ourselves here in Tomogamy, Canada. Sure, maybe the blueberries aren't perfectly ripe right now. Maybe certain greens and shoots aren't ready to be eaten or they're already passed. But no matter what, there's always something that is edible around you. I mean, you show me your friend's place. You show me your family's place, a local ravine. You show me your home, and I'll show you a wild harvest. <laughs>